welcome to Young Money. I'm Nozi Pombanjwa. Now, previously on the show and traditionally on the show, we always go to our young entrepreneurs and find their premises and find out what business they're in. This time, the entrepreneurship has come to us. I'm standing in front of the legendary, legendary barbershop. And as you can see, this is a mobile unit. I'm told that this is one of the most, if not the most exclusive, top-notch, premium experience that you will ever get of having a haircut and it started right here in South Africa we're about to meet uh, the founder and the owner uh, of uh, the legendary barbershop his name is Sheldon Thatchell and uh, he's come to meet me in the center of Joburg and he's going to be treating me to a haircut so let's go and meet him are you in there <laughs> Hi, how are you? Lovely, lovely to meet you. So this is Sheldon Thatchell. We're going to head inside, uh, have a conversation with him about his entrepreneurial journey and uh, fingers crossed that I also get a haircut in the process. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sheldon. So this is me getting into the hot seat. Um, as you can see, um, just all around me is absolute luxury, absolute uh, premium experience. Um, we've got a sort of a mini bar uh, to this side on my right hand side. On my left hand side, I've got a screen uh, um, that is showing up some uh, music videos. And I've got another screen in front of me. And um, Millet has just walked in and she's actually going to be popping some champagne so that uh, I can get uh, an opportunity to have a drink while my hair is being done. Now, another feature that you're seeing also right now is that inside uh, this mobile unit, which is large enough to actually have the entire crew uh, inside it, there's also two seats where I could actually have uh, two guests or two friends sitting with me while I'm having my, my hair done, and they've got a PlayStation console that they can be busy with while they're waiting for me to get my hair done. So. Uh, Sheldon, I mean, I think I'm sounding like a child in a <laughs> in an absolute candy shop. Let's let's talk about you uh, for a yes, second. Yes, yes. Where on earth did this idea come from? Where did you start? Where did Leg Legendary Barber actually come from? So it all started like 2011. Yeah. Uh, when me and a friend decided back then uh, to open a store, but eventually. Uh, Oops! That was the champagne. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so eventually due to unforeseen circumstances we closed down and then after it I went into that my own 2014. But during the time when we closed down, like uh, I had a scooter. Yeah. And uh, with the scooter I had to like uh, to service the customers mobile, you understand? So, yeah. Thank uh, you. So basically what yeah. I used to do, I used to like just go out, uh, put everything at the back, just put my my bags, my clippers, everything at the back of a scooter. And, uh, and just go out. And what I found is there was a lot of people that felt uncomfortable about me going into their houses. Like, especially yeah. like when you go cut in the kitchen or you go yes. cut in the room, you understand? You understand? Yeah. It's always that awkward place. And now and then you'll find this load shedding as well. You understand? So, <laughs> so you're so all there with of, everything yes. and, and then you can't do anything. Yes, 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 yes. So, so back then the idea of a bus came about. You understand? Mm. But due to due to funds, we couldn't afford it at the time. But I mean, it came at the right time. It came like uh, last year, last year, October, 2017, October. And, and I mean, like, it's been doing well ever since. The shops, however, uh, like I said, we opened 2014. Yeah. And when we reopened, we, uh, I told the guys at the time that we were about to open five stores in the five years. Yes. And nobody believed me. And you're in six stores now, and yeah, it's only yeah, four yeah, years yeah, later, yeah, yeah, or the yeah. beginning of the fourth year. Yes, 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 yes. Although there was a lot of obstacles along the way, you understand? There was a lot of things that happened along the way. But I mean, like, these are just things that just go and just make you stronger, isn't it? I mean, I think your story is absolutely phenomenal because out of the setback uh, of having to actually close shop came this idea that. Uh, we could be mobile, we, we don't need brick and mortar and in fact 
brick and mortar stores only came afterwards. So how has this taken off? I mean, I'm, I, I'm told that some of your clients are, you know, really influential celebrities in South Africa and you really have um, a formidable client base. Talk to us a little bit about how you've been received in the market and if there's any competition for you. Uh, basically, like especially like with the celebs and stuff, I mean, they've been supporting us ever since, you understand. I mean, like our first celeb that we started cutting was like 2015 when we uh, when we had our store in uh, Florida and like uh, we've been servicing the Lando Pirates guys, you understand, and they've been coming out to the store yeah. a lot, you understand. So. Well, I think like ever since then it grew to, it grew a lot, you understand, because now it's not only the soccer players, it's now the artists, there's even like well-known pastors that even cut in the bus as well. There's a lot of people that we service in, you understand, and I think like it's all through God, you understand, because yeah. of the grace, grace that you've seen in the business, because people wonder what, what do you all do, what booty do you all use so that you're so successful. And it's just yeah. the grace of God, yeah, you say. Yeah, it is, it is. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. So. Before I go on, I'm assuming you're an Alinda Pirates supporter. I, I can't see you. I can't see you admitting or confessing to be a, a, a Kaiser Chief supporter after all of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got me with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, who's the client base? I mean, I know that you've got you, you, you the influential celebrities sort of started the the sort of getting you guys visible. Yeah. But ordinarily, um, is it normal that a nosy pole would be sitting? Uh, in your seat, or is this something like sort of men are keeping as a well-hidden secret amongst themselves? No, I think like even like uh, like with ladies also, you get like ladies like uh, Lute Love, Masi Chaba. Mm. There's quite a lot of ladies that actually they actually prefer in cutting hair now. I think like it's all going the natural route instead of like the yeah. weaves and all of that stuff because we all know what weaves can do to your hair. Yeah. You see, so I think like it's just it's just going natural now. And so you, you're seeing that women clientele, and I know that beyond just the hair, yeah. there's also some other services that you are actually bringing to the surface for women. Yes, yes, yes. So, so as you can see, there's a lady here, uh, mm -hmm. so she does like the nails, she yeah. does the nails, she does the, uh, the facials, and she washes your hair and stuff, and she just makes you look good. Yeah, you see, so I take care of this while, while yeah. she'll take care of other stuff. Yes. So you literally can get a 360 service, like yeah. everything more or less at the same time. I mean, I really love your story and, 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 and how it started and how, you know, some of the things that you've had to go through to make it uh, to this point. But I'm also getting the sense that this is just the beginning. And I'm really getting the sense <laughs> that this, this gets bigger and better with time. What's, on, what's in the pipeline? If you think about God's grace, where do you want God's grace to carry you? The other day, the other day, me and a friend of mine we were busy talking, I understand. And he was also asking me the same thing. And I was asking me, what's next? What's next? Are you going to do a barber in a private jet? Just tell us what's next, what's next? Yeah. And so I was telling him, you know what, like, like the main focus of our business is just to serve people, you understand. I believe that I was called to serve people, you understand. So, yeah. and so that's the main focus, you understand. And, uh, and basically just to be all over Africa, all over Africa. There's, there's this plan that you put in place to, uh, to open shop all around, all around Africa. And this, and this is actually the first time I'm saying it in public, but we're going to open yeah. like 200 stores all around Africa. Sure. You understand? So, so uh, that's where we're going to, yeah, that's where we're going to. So we're just looking to serve people all, all across because you get like the demand is there, like people mm -hmm. are crying out for us, especially like, like the likes of Nigeria, Botswana, Mozambique. Yeah. There's a lot of people that's asking for us, you understand? So for us just to go and serve them will be such a blessing to them as well. So I really love that. The, the first dream was uh, five stores in five years. Yes. And that uh, target was hit and surpassed within record time. Yeah. And now we're talking about 200 stores across, uh, the, uh, across the continent. Yes. And I mean, I think that's, you know, that's absolutely uh, phenomenal. But I'm sure, Sheldon, um, there must be some sort of motivation or personal drive um, that that keeps you going and keeps you dreaming to do bigger and better things for the business. What are the things that just you know help you stay on course and stay focused? Because I know there have been some big setbacks, but yeah. every day as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, can be challenging in its own way. So how do you how do you keep it together and stay focused? I think like just. 
Yeah. Just knowing your customers, you understand? Just being true to you as a person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we all look to grow as human beings, you understand? And I think like, you know, I think like, uh, I have like good mentors, especially like uh, in, in terms of a customers. Yeah. Because I, because I serve guys that actually, that I look up to myself, you understand? I'm thinking myself, I want to be like this guy one day. I want to, you, you understand? Mm. Just the type of role models so it actually makes me believe that it's possible. You yeah. Understand? yeah. So it's almost as if every person in the seat is an opportunity for a conversation, and that yes. conversation grows that person and grows you at the same yes, time. Yes, that's true. That's true. Because I, because one thing I firm, I firmly believe is, uh, is in relationships. Yeah. Understand? You don't just sit in a chair just to get the haircut. Understand? You sit in a chair to actually build a relationship with a person who's dealing with your hair. Because personally, I mean, like. Even as a lady, yeah. understand. Even as a lady, you you know that you won't trust anyone with your hair. You understand? Yes. Oh yeah. You understand? You rather build a relationship with that person to see is this person really true what he's saying they are. You understand? So it's just building relationships with people, and I think like that's where the business is based at. Mm -hmm. Understand? Just making sure that our relationships are firm with the customers that we have. Yeah. And of course, the the relationships being firm is also a function of the trust. Yes. Uh, that you're able to build uh, yeah. with with your with your customers, and 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 before we get deeper into trust, I just wanted maybe for you to share with us how do you how do you think about how do you price this experience? I personally haven't seen anything like this in South Africa before, and you know, oftentimes yeah. I'll be maybe on one of the social media sites, and you'll see these uh, debates about guys saying. I'm not going to pay more than 50 rand for a haircut, <laughs> you know, because I can go to the corner. And, and usually it's because they can't understand why a woman would spend a couple yes, of thousand yes, yes, on her yes. hair. So with that as the background, how do you then decide how much you're actually going to charge? I think like it also comes down to uh, the, whole, the whole concept of a bus, you understand? Mm. How much was invested in the bus, you understand? It was quite... It was quite arm and a leg, but I mean, like, we managed to get it done because because a lot of things that you see in the bus, some of the stuff is not even from SA, you yeah. understand? And, and, like, the things that we done to the bus is, like, to its tea, you understand? And it's like, it's like basically, like, to put it in a price, you're unable to put it in a price because it's like, like, I'm coming to you, I'm coming to wherever you are, you're yeah. getting your nails done, you you're getting any type of You almost can't price the convenience, it's yes. just so convenient. Yeah, I, yeah. and I mean, like, that's what people want nowadays. People just want convenience, you understand? I'm also getting the sense that people just want something very personalized and people value experiences more. Yes. Um, I could be getting my hair cut at any other place, but the experience of actually being here with you yeah. in itself and the fact yeah. that I could have two friends with me uh, and while I'm doing this is absolutely phenomenal. So yes. Sheldon, I think what we're going to do is let's take a short break. Okay. As you can see, I hope my hair is coming <laughs> along nicely. The mirror is behind me. So I, I, it, this is all about trust. I literally can't <laughs> see uh, what he's doing. I'm going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to cross fingers that I'm looking even better uh, than I did at the beginning of the show. And we're going to continue to get to know Sheldon just a little bit better. Welcome back to Young Money. If you've just joined us, uh, you have missed a phenomenal conversation. I am here with Sheldon Thatchell. He is uh, the owner of the legendary barber. As you can see, he is uh, beautifying me and giving me a haircut. But he's really been talking us through his entrepreneurial journey, his motivations and his drivers. Today they stand as perhaps one, the only, if not one of uh, the most premium, most high-end experiences uh, that you can get uh, in terms of getting a, a barber experience in South Africa. The dream is to open 200 uh, of these operations across the African continent. So, Sheldon, le let's come back to you. I want you to just uh, go back to me in terms of who's been on this journey with you. Um, I know that. We're here together now, and I know your colleague uh, is here, and she's been awesome. But 
have you found the journey to be lonely in terms of people who have supported the idea? Uh, or have you found that there's just literally been support from every corner? No, I think like, uh, especially when you're starting out, you understand, like the support that was there was, was mainly my wife, you understand, because yeah. she has been by me ever since, I understand, like ever since the whole incident that happened with the old shop. Yeah. I mean, like she has always been there with me. I also have like long-standing colleagues that still up until with me today, you understand. So, yeah, yeah, so I think the support is really there, especially for myself as mm. well. So the support has really come from your family base. Yes. Um, and when you were needing the funds to actually get this all going, because I know you said that, you know, some of the things that are in here aren't even from South Africa, and that means you had to procure, yeah. uh, um, you know, uh, an import uh, yeah. to really get this experience put together. Did you, did you have to go look for funding? Did you have the funding? W how did you put the fuel and the petrol yes, behind yes, this yes. idea? I think like the business paid for itself, I understand. Like all the six stores that opened actually paid for itself, I yeah. understand. So, uh, so in the beginning, like nobody wanted to give us funds. Like I knocked on every door. But it was actually a good thing for me, you understand, because now I've learned that, that you don't actually need funding to start a business. You don't need funding. You all, all you just need to do is start with what you have, you understand? Because you're going to get all of that funding, what you going to do with it, you understand? Sometimes, sometimes all you just need is a clipper, a chair, you understand? And, and it keeps you going, you understand? You don't need a lot, especially like in this business that I am. So, uh, so basically all stores are self-funded through the business itself, yeah. But I can, I can almost uh, hear some of the entrepreneurs who are busy working on like, proposals and business cases uh, for funding, you know, getting irritated at your comments, say, ah, oh, now that you've made it, and now that, you know, you've got all these big celebrity clients, now you obviously are going to be saying that, you know, you don't need funding. What do you think is the biggest mindset shift that entrepreneurs maybe have to go through for them to actually realize that they re it really is about starting with what you have where you are? I think like, I think like this whole idea where you think to say like money is always going to fall out of the sky, especially like through government or yeah. through, or through just some and source, and yes, yeah. yes, yes, which I think like, and if you do take that money, mo mostly, mostly you tend to fail because it's not your money, you understand, mm. and that's true, I understand, but if you start with your own capital and you're like, you know what, I'm going to go in this with my own money that I've worked for as hard, you understand? Yeah. And then only it's going to be a success, then it's going to be like... Because you're going to care about every rand, yes, because it's yes, your rand. because and it's yours, and it's not somebody else that you're wasting, you see. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's really phenomenal. I want to go back maybe to just to uh, family background and, and, and upbringing and so on. You must be one of those people who are constantly asked, I'm sure, by your own community. To come and share your story and yeah. and and how you've gotten here, um, what do you think? You know, we need to be telling uh, young boys and girls about uh, starting businesses and running uh, with their businesses, especially uh, when we. I know you said you you're from El Dorado yes, when we when yes, we were speaking yes, off yes, air, yes. especially when we come from communities which aren't always bursting with opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I think like I think like people get. People get like entrepreneurship and all of this stuff like that's informed because even the way people start out with businesses because most of the time you'll think to yourself that you won't that you'll never be be successful if you do X Y and Z you understand yeah. you can become the best cleaner you can become the best you understand and you can make a business out of it you understand yeah. just think about it who would have been thinking that I will be standing in front of you yeah. as a barber you understand yeah, yeah. You understand the founder of six stores you understand so it's like the whole perspective of of do what you love you understand yeah. that's the main important thing do what you love and, and and like money should be your last priority you understand yeah. just concentrate on this thing that you love the most and just make a success out of it just put all your efforts into it well, there you have it. Do what you love. And again, uh, it's always a message that keeps coming through over and over and over again. And I don't think we almost hear uh, the message. And it's simple. It's straightforward. It's just about doing what you love. Now, Sheldon, one of the things that um, I, I, I really do want us uh, to, to touch on 
is that if we just look at more broadly just the market of um, you know personal grooming yes. uh, there's been so many different um, uh, sort of concepts uh, popping up and I don't want to name competitors by name but this yeah. idea that you can really go to a place and have a, a, a very personalized high-end experience yeah. um, what are you going to be doing uh, or what are you currently doing to just make sure that you are ahead of the pack despite maybe your price point being higher than them what, what how are you going to make this experience even more meaningful going forward the bus is actually the first of its kind I understand people mm. think of it as this is this is something that's really new into the market I mean like people isn't grasping onto it there's a lot of new customers that have been going out and, and they're overwhelmed you mm. understand same like you I understand people's like wow this yeah. is like this is really one of a kind you can see like all of the the work and the thought they they get put into something like this you understand so it's yeah. like so it's like basically just it's just always going overboard just making sure that you know you know what you're doing yeah. you understand just study just study everything what you do mm. make sure make sure that that you outsmart your competitor in every way because because one thing I'm that I've always learned as a person, you understand? Nobody remembers who came second. Yeah. Understand? Oh, yes. Everybody, rem uh, everybody remembers who came first. You understand? So, yeah. So people rank us like the number one barber shop in Africa. You understand? And it's like we're not even in Africa yet. You understand? <laughs> so people rank us there. You understand? So always. So you're not even frightened about the idea that other people are going to latch onto the concept. No, I'm not. And I'm and not. before you know it, maybe you have other mobile sort of uh, barber buses going around because you 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 differentiated that just that strong. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. As long as you're the first one to do it, you understand. Because God put something in you, you understand. Yeah. People can't always copy what God has placed in your heart. You understand? Mm, yeah. Because I mean, like the idea that came about came long time mm. before before us sitting out here. Understand? Yeah. This idea was placed back in 2012, you see, so... And it's been six years in the making. Yeah, you understand. So, so yeah. Sheldon, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure having this conversation with you. We're going to start uh, doing a wash. bit of a hair wash. So you're going to get some of those uh, images coming through. And uh, we're going to be sending you before and after pictures as well. Uh, but before we go, a quick one, Sheldon. How yeah. do people get a hold of you? Uh, they can get us... Uh, on Instagram, it's at legends underscore barber, Facebook legends barber shop, on Twitter it's legends underscore barber underscore, and fa and on our website is legends barber shop .co .za. See, there you have it. Don't yeah. ever say I don't do nice things for you guys. Remember that if you want the young money crew to come to you, it's really easy. It's just about following me on Twitter. It's at the real nosy or at CNBC Africa. Send me a young DM and uh, tell me a little bit about your business and we will certainly make our way over to you. It's been a fantastic show. Uh, Sheldon, you're an absolute gem. I much. can't wait to actually see what I look like because <laughs> I actually haven't seen. We'll see that in a moment. But for now, it's cheers for me. <laughs>